The Demand Driven Institute is the global authority for demand driven education, training, and compliance. This video will provide a brief introduction to the case for and concept of demand driven MRP. Today, most manufacturing enterprises throughout the world use a planning method and tool called Material Requirements Planning, or simply MRP. The availability of the computer ushered in the era of MRP. Joe Orlicky brought MRP into the mainstream in his 1975 book Material Requirements Planning, a new way of life for production and inventory management. MRP was a revolution for industry. It featured time phase planning, level by level bill of material explosion, and dependent demand planning. It promised to synchronize all component needs to end item demand, reduce inventory, and improve the ability to prioritize. It changed the way of life in manufacturing. In 1975, only 700 instances of MRP existed in the world. With the release of Orlicky's book and others like it, MRP quickly proliferated throughout the world. It became the way of life for planning. But we should not overlook the fact that MRP was conceived in the 1950s, codified in the 1960s, and then commercialized in the 1970s, and by 1990, most manufacturers had it. Today, almost every supply chain is dominated by MRP systems conveying signals up and down the chain to each other. But something is terribly wrong. The people that use MRP systems don't trust them. The use of spreadsheets to work around MRP calculations is rampant. Several studies have shown that on average, 70% of companies admit to using spreadsheets to augment or supplant the MRP planning equations, despite them having limited capability, scalability, and transferability. They are also error-prone with nearly 90% of spreadsheets containing some form of error. This is not news to seasoned supply chain personnel and demonstrates how little faith they have in MRP. What happened to the promise of the tool? One basic thing we need to realize is that today's supply chains look nothing like the supply chains of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, when the MRP rules were written. Complex and volatile is the new normal, yet these rules have not changed. MRP still plans the way it did 50 years ago. Now there is a huge gap between the circumstances that MRP was meant for and the circumstances in which it is currently being used. This change of circumstances has huge implications for supply chain planning. Supply chains have elongated and fragmented from global sourcing and distribution efforts, while customer tolerance times have reduced dramatically. This widening gap in time means that stock at some point must be kept in order to service the market. It also means that the planning horizon is farther from actual demand, requiring us to forecast farther out. Additional stress is provided by the fact that we have more products with shorter lifespans. All of this means that effectively managing key stock positions is a necessity for properly servicing the market, as well as effective capital and resource management. It also makes detailed item level forecasting much more difficult. There are three rules of forecasting. One, they start out wrong. Two, the longer the range, the more wrong they are. Three, the more detailed, the more wrong they are. So how are modern MRP systems dealing with these changing circumstances? In order to demonstrate just how poorly these systems are handling the new normal, we will use a simple graphic, one that most anyone familiar with supply chain will be comfortable with. We know that there are two universal points of inventory. Point A is too little. Component shortages, expedites, and missed sales are experienced at this point. Point B is too much. There is excess cash, capability, materials, and space committed at this point. At both of these points, flow breaks down. If we know these two points exist, then we also know that somewhere between the points there must be an optimal range, a level that is needed to protect flow without being excess. Yet most companies exhibit what is known as bimodal distribution. Most of the inventory is either in the too low or too high range, very little is within the optimal range. Worse yet, every MRP run typically results in an oscillation, which shifts parts from one extreme to the other. 90% of companies using MRP report this issue. This bimodal distribution is devastating to the bottom line. It means chronic and frequent shortages while also having excessive inventory and incurring high expenses due to expedite and waste. Yet this is only at the single company level, and a single company is only one component of the collective supply chain. The collective problem is one that wreaks havoc on modern supply chains. It is called the bullwhip effect. The bullwhip effect is the transference and amplification of variability up and down the chain. It is bidirectional. The more parts to the chain, the worse the effect. Any lasting solution to the bullwhip must address the bidirectional nature of the problem. This brings us to demand-driven material requirements planning, or DDMRP for short. DDMRP is a method to model, plan, and manage supply chains to protect and promote the flow of relevant information and materials. DDMRP uses strategic decoupling points to drive supply order generation and management through a supply chain. It was first introduced to the world in the third edition of Orlicky's Material Requirements Planning after 15 years of research and application. 
Through innovation, it fuses key planning requirements with today's prominent flow-based improvement methodologies. It can best be summarized as position, protect, and pull. DDMRP has five sequential components, strategic decoupling, buffer profiles and levels, dynamic adjustments, demand-driven planning, and finally, visible and collaborative execution. Let's look at each one of these components in more detail. DDMRP strategically places decoupling points of inventory within the product structure and supply chain. These points are carefully selected through a variety of factors. This placement stops the transfer and amplification of variability in both directions at these strategic points. Planning horizons shorten and lead times compress immediately. Here we see the difference between the way MRP and DDMRP view planning. On the left, MRP couples every activity together. This produces a longer plan lead time and means that date and quantity changes in one thing affect everything. On the right, we see a DDMRP design. Decoupling points have been used to create shorter, independent planning horizons that stop the cascading effect of changes at critical areas. The market lead time has been compressed to one week. The critical difference here is that MRP was never designed to decouple. It makes everything dependent, forcing longer planning horizons and introducing massive amounts of system nervousness. The second component of DDMRP are buffer profiles and levels. This is simply building the level of shock absorption at the decoupling point so that it can mitigate variability in both directions. Part demand information based on historical and or forecasted usage rates is combined with the DDMRP part settings to create a unique color-coded three-zone buffer. Each zone has a distinct purpose and a specific method to calculate it. The critical difference here is that the DDMRP was designed specifically for the management of key stock positions. MRP was never intended to manage stock. Its intent was to be the perfect make-to-order calculator, negating the need for stock. That is why MRP nets to zero and DDMRP never nets to zero. And don't be fooled by the concept of safety stock. It was forcibly grafted onto MRP due to increasing levels of variability. The safety stock mechanism is an inelegant and ineffective stock management tool, and in many cases, exacerbates the bullwhip effect by introducing additional demand signal distortion that ultimately require higher levels of overall supply chain inventory and expenses. Since safety stock doesn't decouple, at best it can be characterized as a series of fire extinguishers, when companies and supply chains really need a series of strategically placed and managed fire walls. The next DDMRP component is dynamic buffer adjustment. Once the initial buffer sizes are set, we know that things will change. DDMRP allows the buffers to flex up or down with either changes to actual usage or in anticipation of events or seasons. The critical difference here is that most safety stock and order point systems are static and not dynamic. Demand-driven planning is the fourth component of DDMRP. In DDMRP, planning is the process of generating supply orders. In order to do that, DDMRP uses a unique equation. The demand element of that equation has no forecasted orders. Conventional MRP planning uses planned orders derived from forecast to generate orders, in anticipation of need over a longer planning horizon. DDMRP uses only qualified sales orders within the immediate range horizon as demand allocations. A critical difference is in the quality of the demand signal. A sales order is highly accurate. It is an explicit statement of what will be consumed, while planned orders are highly inaccurate. This unique supply order generation equation is called the net flow equation. The quantity on hand is added to the quantity of open supply, then quantity of qualified demand is subtracted. This produces the day's net flow position. If the day's net flow position is below the top of the yellow zone, an order is issued for the amount to reach the top of the green zone. Once again, DDMRP is designed to never net to zero. This brings us to the final component of DDMRP, visible and collaborative execution. In DDMRP, execution is about the management of open supply orders. DDMRP uses easy-to-interpret signals on open supply priorities against the on-hand buffer position. The lower the on-hand level, the higher the threat to maintaining flow and the higher the execution priority. Thus, a critical difference between MRP and DDMRP is that MRP assigns priority by due date, while DDMRP assigns priority by buffer status. This will produce different views of priority. One is based on arbitrary and constantly shifting due dates, while the other shows relative and real-time threats to flow that is both highly visible and intuitive. And what about that bimodal distribution thing? Well, you can say goodbye to it. DDMRP is proven to allow companies to plan and execute in the optimal range at strategically chosen points. That means flow is protected and promoted. The typical benefits of DDMRP are compelling. Users consistently achieve 97 to 100% on-time fill rate performance. Lead time reductions in excess of 80% have been achieved in several industry segments. Typical inventory reductions of 30 to 45% are achieved while improving customer service. Costs related to expedited activity and false signals are largely eliminated. 
Planners have relevant information. They see priorities instead of constantly fighting the conflicting messages of MRP. You can learn more about DDMRP by reading the authoritative work Demand-Driven Material Requirements Planning. You can also take the Demand-Driven Planner Program. The program is available through our affiliates around the world or online. Be sure to visit the Case Study section of the Demand-Driven Institute website to see dozens of case studies on DDMRP. This is the Demand-Driven Institute, wishing you the best of luck on your demand-driven journey.